Hey there. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing the Lumix S1H with the S52X. Now you can easily substitute in the S52 here for the S52X because they're very, very similar cameras. There's only a few differences between them and we're not gonna be talking about those in this video. So what I wanna do here is I wanna compare these two cameras and see how the older S1H stacks up against the newest S52X and see where there are differences or if there are any differences. Now, if you're unaware of the S1H, it is a legendary camera in not just the filmmaking community, but of course in the Panasonic Lumix community. It came out in 2019. It's actually a Netflix approved camera. Now, I'm not gonna get into all of the details comparing these two cameras because I really just wanna focus on image quality and just sort of, like I said, the image that you can get on these two cameras and see where they differ. All right, we'll start off with actually looking at some images and comparing them and see what they look like. So for all of these test shots, I shot everything in the 4K UHD 10-bit 422 all I, and this is oversampled from the full sensor. I also used my Sigma Art EF 28 millimeter F1.4 lens, which I use in most of my testing, and of course using the Sigma MC21 adapter. I shot all this in V-Log, I used the technical conversion LUT and then graded one of them just to add a little more contrast and saturation until it looked pretty good, and I just copied that grade over to the other one. So I didn't do any color adjustments so you could see the differences between the two of them. And for all these tests, the sharpness and the noise reduction were both set at zero in the camera. All right, starting off here with an image of me and with both cameras here. This is just V-Log coming out of the camera. This is what it looks like. And then adding the Rec. 709 LUT, the technical conversion LUT here. And then lastly, I graded one, like I said, and copied that grade to the other so you could see any differences here. They both look great. I think the Sharp looks, looks pretty similar from a real world example. So let's take a look at some other ones. Here's a shot of my car. Again, I don't see many differences between these two. If you put both of these up, I don't know if I could tell the difference between the two of them. Here's another clip. Uh, again, in terms of the colors, you can see there's a slight difference, uh, maybe a little bit of a difference in the bokeh and the highlight roll off, but really clearly similar. Here, a shot out in front of my house. I, again, very similar. I do see a little bit of difference in the shadows there. I see a little more magenta maybe in the S52X. And lastly, the shot of the tennis balls. I couldn't tell the difference here between the two of them. Overall, cameras look very similar. So here we are looking at a test chart in the studio and I exposed these exactly the same way and just applied the technical conversion LUT. Overall, I really don't see much of a difference in terms of sharpness when we're zoomed out here at 100%. So let's take a look and zoom in at 300%. I think maybe there is a slight, and I mean very slight, sharpness advantage to the S52X here. One thing I notice is that the whites are a little bit different between the two cameras, so we will take a look at that with some color charts. So recording the test chart here in the studio, I of course use the same lighting and exposure, 42% middle gray in V-Log. So let's start looking at the left side of the chart here to look at the luminance values and see if the log curves kind of match and sort of get the same sort of contrast and that sort of stuff. So nothing's been applied here. So I'm just going to turn the titles off here, but S52X on the left, S1H on the right. So taking a look here at the waveform, I'm looking at the white chip. You can see they kind of all line up together, the middle gray, and then down here, we have the black chip, that's this part right here, and they all kind of line up. So we're getting very similar mapping with the uh, the log curve and also, uh, you know, with uh, contrast and all that sort of stuff. So coming over here, this is once we add the technical conversion LUT, so you can see that they match up, but we definitely see a difference in colors. You can see that the gray in the background is kind of different, and maybe you can see the whites are a little bit different. So let's go take a look at colors. So on the color side of the color chart here, all I did was add the technical conversion LUT and then add a little more saturation to bump it up a little bit. I'm just gonna change this scope over here to a vector scope and take a look and see what's going on here. So all, all these things right here, this is both uh, color charts laid on top of each other. You can see here that they are very similar, but let's talk about some of the differences. So first of all, let me turn off the S1H. So this is just the S52X. And then when I turn the S1H back on, you could sort of see the differences. So as I toggle S1H off and on here, let's take a look. The yellows line up. The greens do not. Looks like on the S1H, the green is pushing towards yellow. The cyan, this is right here, this is the S1H, is pushing towards blue. The blues look almost identical. The magentas are pretty close with a difference in saturation. And the reds are identical, but a difference in saturation. So what I notice here is that I think the S1H may be a little bit less accurate in terms of the colors, like green shifting, the cyan shifting, uh, the magenta, a little bit of a shift. But the big difference in terms of the saturation is that if I toggle 
the S52X on and off here, you can see that the red and magenta are more saturated. So a little bit of a difference here, but overall uh, pretty accurate colors coming out of these two cameras. So now let's compare the dynamic range of these two cameras. In general, I think there's three good ways of testing dynamic range, and I've talked about this in several other videos. The first way is the technical way of using a Xyla 21 and the Imitest software that you see people like Cine D and Gerald Undun do. I personally don't have access to that gear, although I really wish I did. So the other two ways I like to compare dynamic range, the first one is recording a scene that has really high dynamic range, which is usually me in a dark room next to a bright window. And then the last way that I like to take a look at dynamic range is do a latitude or push-pull test. So here is the indoor test where I stand next to a bright window. And the way I do this test is I expose for the highlights and then I pull up the shadows and take a look and see what's going on there. I think both these cameras have a lot of dynamic range. I, you wouldn't be disappointed in either one, but let's talk about the differences. First of all, I think the highlights look very similar. There are some subtle differences here in the shadows. I think the S1H maybe holds on to a little bit more information here. It's a little bit cleaner. There's also a difference in colors. The S52X leans green, whereas the S1H leans a little bit more magenta. Here's the latitude or push-pull test, and we're starting off with the underexposure test, and we do this to take a look and see in the shadows how much noise and information is there and how well it holds color and that sort of stuff. Both look good. Two stops underexposed like usual. Uh, three stops underexposed, I start to see a little bit of an advantage here for the S1H. You see it even more so at four stops. And at five stops, of course, they both are pretty ugly, but I have to give a small advantage to the S1H in terms of the shadows. In terms of the overexposure test and into the highlights, both cameras are pretty clean up through a couple of stops overexposed. Here it is at two stops. And here it is at three stops overexposed, both cameras holding together really well. Again, at four stops, I think they look decent. Uh, it's definitely a little bit more issues. And at five stops, they start to break. So pretty standard exposure stuff. And the highlights for most mirrorless cameras, they all are good through four and kind of break at five stops. But there was definitely a little bit of a difference there in terms of the dynamic range in the shadows, maybe like a half a stop or so. Next, let's talk about the optical low pass filter and the more that you get in these two cameras. For me personally, I'm a huge fan of optical low pass filters as a videographer because I've had shots ruined by Moray and there's not much you can do about that point. So if I can have the option to have an optical low pass filter, it's a very large advantage for me. Now, most of the time Moray shows up in man-made things like you see them in fabrics. I've seen them show up on shingles, on the roofs of houses, stuff like that. But it was interesting because I actually saw this on a parrot that I was shooting was on vacation. This was in an earlier video that I posted. And so this was actually recorded with an older lens. This was my contact Zeiss 50mm 1.4. And when you zoom in, you can definitely see it on the bird's feathers. So I was definitely a little bit surprised by this because as I said, they usually just show up in man-made things. But I've heard more and more people talking about the S52 and S52X on YouTube, reviewing it and giving their opinions that they're complaining about the, uh, the moray that you get in this camera because it doesn't have an optical low pass filter. So let's compare the two images of these cameras, taking a look at this shirt here, which is a fabric that you would definitely see more show up on. And taking a look at them, I would say that they're actually closer than I thought they'd be. The optical low pass filter in the S1H does not completely eliminate the more, but it definitely reduces it a little bit. So again, it's nice to have the OLPF in the S1H. It doesn't completely eliminate more, but it definitely lowers it a little bit. And um, one of the other benefits of having an optical low pass filter for a videographer or a filmmaker, besides trying to reduce those artifacts, is the fact that it can sometimes soften the image just a little bit and kind of take that digital edge off. But we noticed earlier on, taking a look at the image quality and also the test charts here in the studio, there really wasn't a big difference in terms of the sharpness. So maybe the optical low pass filter is fairly weak in the S1H, I'm not really sure, but I was hoping to see more of an advantage or a difference between the performance of these two cameras because of that filter. So because these cameras look so similar and there's just some subtle differences, it begs the question of whether or not these two cameras have the same sensor. My guess is that they're either the same or maybe very similar. Of course, there's no way to actually know, so this is just my guess about it, but they both have 24.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensors. They have the same ISO range. They both have dual base ISO. They have similar video specs where they can shoot up to 4K 60 cropped. They can shoot 6K open gate, et cetera. The main differences being there was a little bit of dynamic range difference and the optical low pass filter, which we talked about. The S52X also has the phase detect autofocus. And whenever they add phase detect autofocus or change the autofocus technology on a sensor, it can change a lot of the, some of the other technical things in the camera. So that might account for the difference in dynamic range. I'm not really sure, but it's kind of interesting that 
they were so similar at being that these cameras were made four years apart from each other. All right, so as I try to wrap this up, what are some of the differences between these two cameras? So first of all, what are some of the advantages that the S1H has over the S5 II or the S52X? Well, like we were talking about earlier, it has that optical low pass filter, which should help reduce those more and artifacts you would get in cameras that you that don't have an optical low pass filter. The S1H also has a way better EVF and LCD screen, which is really nice when you're out shooting. The S52X has phase detect autofocus, which actually works pretty well. It is also a lot cheaper and it's much smaller. I know for some people they like a bigger body, but I think in general, if you could have a smaller body, I think that is a little bit more of an advantage. Now, as of recording this, the S52 and S52X are around $2,000, depending on which one you get and if they're on sale. The S1H does sell for $4,000, but it has been on sale for $2,500, and you can pick one up used a lot cheaper. So if you're looking for a used S1H, you could probably get it for around the same price or maybe cheaper. So there's some differences there. But if you need autofocus, the S1H is not the camera for you. You should definitely be thinking about the S52 or the S52X. Now, it's really interesting to think about this in general because you have two cameras that were produced four years apart at very different price points that perform very similarly. I'd like to have seen more of a difference between them in the course of four years, but this one is was sold at a much higher price point. Now, if you're looking for autofocus, of course, definitely get the S52 or the S52X if you really want to try to avoid more A and the OLPF is a huge selling point for you and you don't mind using manual focus, then maybe look at the S1H. Let me know what you think about these two cameras uh, down below. I appreciate all of you guys watching. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one.